Welcome to the rescheduled public meeting from August 10th, 2020 of the Township of Washington Township Council. Adequate notice of the meeting was given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by the Township Clerk on August 10th, 2020 to the Bergen record and has been posted on the Township Bulletin Board, Electronic Message Board, WCTV, and on the Township website. Salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Do roll call, please. Councilman Cassio. Here. Councilman Cumming. Here. Councilman DeSena. Here. Councilwoman Morgan. Here. Council President Feeney. Here. Public service announcement, coronavirus. For the latest updates, messages on the coronavirus, please visit the Township website. Paper shredding event will take place on, Sue, it was October? 17th. October 17th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Municipal Complex parking lot. Bring your papers to be shredded, no books and no binders. Mail drop box. A blue drop box has been placed outside of the town hall for depositing all correspondence addressed to the proper department. No cash should be placed in the mailbox and all payments must be in a sealed envelope. Property owners, if your property is adjacent to a township-owned property and you are interested in purchasing such a parcel, please send a letter or an email of interest to Mayor Peter Calamari. <clears throat> Update on the township library. The library is, it has begun reopening. Curbside pickup will be available Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between the hours of 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. For residents who are homebound, delivery will be available on Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hours of 1 p.m. through 4 p.m. Please visit the website for further information. Parks and restroom, town parks. Parks and restrooms are open for recreational purposes. All facilities will be sanitized on a regular basis and social distancing and face covering should be utilized. Playgrounds are open, open and sanitized daily. Okay. Uh, this evening we have a JR Guerra is on the phone to give us a ninja update. Um, thank you very much for joining us. You now have the floor. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with everyone and working with you guys have been uh, very pleasant and um, inspiring. Um, just to give you a quick update, uh, some of the early technical difficulties were more um, making we, sure we synced in with the WCTV to work properly. Uh, the other one was to make sure that the recording levels and all the sound levels for further record recording software were optimized so that we can get a uh, uh, recording of, uh, of this and then have it uh, turned into text. And then teaching the mayor and council how to use the system, the benefits and the features, and making sure the security was optimal to where we have a closed system and it's a very secure system, one of the most secure systems on the market. And that was our, our main focus on getting uh, Washington Township Mayor and Council uh, on the Ninja system. And I wanna thank you guys for giving us the opportunity. And uh, it seems like everything is working very satisfactory now. Any questions? Does the council or mayor or administration have any questions? No, thank you. No, nope. thank you very much for the update. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, we are going to go into approval of minutes. April 23rd, 2020, budget meeting. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. I'll second. Two roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman DeSena. Yes. Councilman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Um, approval of minutes from April 28, 2020, budget meeting. Motion to approve. So moved. Okay, I'll second. Two roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman DeSena. Yes. Councilman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Approval of minutes for May 4th, 2020, regular meeting and conference meeting. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. I second. I second. Super roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman DeSena. Yes. Councilman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Um, approval of minutes from May 11, 2020, budget meeting. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. 
Okay, I'll second. second. Sue Roll Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman DeSena? Yes. Councilwoman Morgan? Yes. Council President Feeney? Yes. Um, approval of minutes from June 15, 2020, closed session. Motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Sue Roll Call? Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman DeSena? Yes. Councilwoman Morgan? Yes. Council President Feeney? Yes. Thank you. Uh, this evening we have the report of the mayor, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, just a quick uh, remark uh, before I get into my pre-worded monthly report. I got an update from the DPW today at three o'clock uh, and their words are, the streets east of Pascac Road will be completed tomorrow, Tuesday, August 18th for uh, storm debris removal. They will return yeah. once the west side of town is cleaned up. They began west of Pascac Road today. They are utilizing four dump trucks, two loaders, and the wood chipper where feasible. And they hope to complete the west side of the town early next week. So that's uh, hot off the press. Okay. Um, good evening. Uh, my report's a little longer than usual. I ask that you bear with me. Um, tropical so storm, Isaiah. The wind from this storm hit Washington Township like no other storm in recent memory. Thankfully, there were no injuries or deaths from the storm. However, there is significant and extensive property damage. I was driving around the town with Police Chief Skinner during the storm and was in awe of the devastation. After the storm, myself, Chief Skinner, DPW Crew Chief Dominic Schwartz, DPW Director Dan Scuderi, and OEM Coordinator Rio Fasciano toured the town and conducted a damage assessment. All the following numbers are approximate. There was one house totally destroyed. Two others have major structural damage but might be repairable. 15 additional homes have minor to major damage due to falling trees and branches. Six vehicles were destroyed by falling trees and limbs and the library building had a tree fall on it as well. The ambulance corps activated their special storm crew and members were on duty for a 24 hour period. They responded to many calls during that time period. Fortunately, there were no severe trauma incidents that they have experienced in the past during similar conditions. The fire department responded to 16 calls during the actual storm and another 20 in the days following. Some of the 16 calls were to enter houses that were compromised in some form from minor to major to make sure no one was trapped in those dwellings. We thank all of our volunteers for their bravery and dedication. We also thank their families and loved ones for the support they give our volunteers. Remember these volunteers leave their homes and families during emergencies and stressful times to help all of us. Their families cannot be thanked enough for the sacrifices they make to support these amazing people. Our emergency dispatch desk was busy taking calls, coordinating the police, fire, DPW, and ambulance responses. They answered approximately 100 calls during the storm. The overtime hours for the paid departments are eight for the dispatch desk, 52 for the police department, and 133 for the DPW. Our fire department volunteers put in 206 man hours. Some of the DPWs I spoke to, sorry, some of the DPW workers I spoke to said they finally have the necessary tools and equipment to perform their jobs and it makes a huge difference in getting their jobs done. The wood chipper is essential. I also want to thank the Office of Emergency Management for all the work they put in during and after the storm. One of the larger tasks they perform post-storm is to gather the statistics and complete the paperwork necessary to recover any available money for reimbursement of storm-related expenses. Last but not least, I want to thank the members from WCTV for getting myself, Police Chief Skinner, and DPW Director Dan Scuderi on the air in such short notice before the weekend after the storm so we could provide a televised update. On behalf of myself, the council, and most importantly, our residents, we thank the members from all these departments for their hard work and dedication, not just during usual times, but especially during trying events like this. Hey, so it's Mike, Peter, I apologize. We lost internet by us, so I'm on phone now. We have no internet here either. 
Can you guys That's hear what them? happened to be the first meeting. Okay. Okay, so but you're on Mike, you're on the phone, you can hear us, no problem? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry okay. I lost internet. Okay. Okay, continue. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. Uh, on a related note, a lot of people were forced to deal with extended outages of their internet, phone, and television. In my opinion, some of the providers have had unacceptable customer service since COVID started. I will be sending them a letter this week asking them to explain their poor customer and field services during COVID and during the storm. Many of you have a choice over what provider you use for these now essential services. I encourage you to talk to your neighbors and compare vendors. Any vendor can provide service during normal times. It is the vendors that are prepared for and react quickly to extraordinary circumstances that really earn your business. COVID, the numbers provided by the county Friday night show that our town has had 105 confirmed cases to date. This crisis has and will continue to present great challenges to the school system, particularly the teachers and students. There is no perfect or even ideal solution but I commend everyone involved for their work in trying to make the school experience as good as it can be during this difficult time. On another COVID note, the nearby town of Hawthorne had to reclose their town hall, even though they had taken protective measures to open after two employees tested positive for the coronavirus. As mayor, it is my job to protect both the town employees and the people who interact with them. If you feel the need to visit town hall for something that cannot be addressed by the current means in effect, please contact the department to explain the reason you may need to visit town hall. Each inquiry will be reviewed by the department and the administration. Administrator Tovo is not in attendance this evening as he is mourning the untimely passing of his wife, Tracy, from pancreatic cancer. I ask you to join me and keep him and his family in your thoughts and prayers. Now on to better topics, drive-in movie nights. Public Affairs Director Daisy Velez is determined not to let COVID get in the way of planning events for our community. Since we could not do summer concerts this year, she put two drive-in movie nights together for the, our families. Both were instantly booked to capacity when their respective reservation windows were opened. We were happy to have money available in the trust account to offer these events free of charge to the public during these trying times. I wish to thank the following organizations who worked with us to make the events happen. Bethany Community Center for allowing us to use their parking lot for the events. Demers Farms for providing the screen for the second movie night. The Washington Township PBA for donating popcorn to every vehicle that entered the events. Stress Desserts for making ice cream available and the library for allowing us to use their movie license. The movies were a tremendous success and enjoyed by all who attended. Capital budget. We look forward to the council passing ordinance 20-11 this evening so we can get started on these important projects. Two of the larger projects are the long awaited ladder truck for our fire department and the 2020 road program. Although none of us were happy with the lack of improvements during many years of neglect and now having to spend large amounts of money to catch up on these important projects, I am happy report, to report that the good news is we will be borrowing money to get these important projects done at historically low interest rates. New emergency services building. As is common for a project this size, some addendums to the bid package had to be issued. This delay has caused the bid opening date to be postponed two weeks to August 25th. The delay is unfortunate, but we would rather have this small two week delay and get it right. Lightning detection system. Administrator Tovo did some research and found that we can purchase a backup hub for the existing system at the middle school for about $15,000. It is a small price to pay for a system that so many of our residents and our children rely on for their safety while at the fields. That expenditure will be requested in next year's capital budget. Uh, just repeating something that Stacy said, our shredding event on July 25th was a huge success. Our next one will take place on October 17th and will include electronic recycling. We have updates for the council on the temporary locations for the DPW and property acquisitions for the Pascack and Washington intersection that will be discussed in closed session tonight as it requires negotiation with both entities and property owners. 
2019 road program. A pre-construction meeting was held April 23rd, 2020. Two days before the meeting, PSE&G announced their intention to replace gas mains at 43 locations throughout the township. Initially, all the streets within the road improvement program were affected by PSE&G's intended work. The township notified PSE&G of the streets within the program in 2019. Regardless, Boswell and the township worked extensively with PSE&G and the township's contractor to reconstitute the road program to pave other streets not affected by PSE&G's current or future work, restore half streets as a result of PSE&G's current work, and honor the township's obligation to the New Jersey DOT to resurface Robinwood and Woodfield Roads in 2020. To date, the following streets have been completed. Robinwood Road, Calvin Street from Crestwood Terrace to Howard Street, Crestwood Terrace, Prospect Ave, and a portion of Cosman Street. The contractor is scheduled to return in a few weeks to complete Woodfield Road from Devon Road to Finity Place, Salem Road, Viola Terrace, and Johnson Place once PSE&G has completed their work and sewer repairs can be performed. In closing, I encourage you to support our local vendors, stores, and restaurants as much as possible. We want to help them continue to stay in business during the pandemic. They are great people running terrific businesses and they contribute to making this community the wonderful place it is. Many of their bills and expenses are the same, even though they are trying to survive on much less volume. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And now the report from council, Councilman Cassio. Yeah, the mayor probably covered everything in his report. Uh, I have to thank the uh, emergency services for their outstanding work and making sure everyone got the services they required. I'm glad there was no injuries during the storm, and it does show that we can do amazing things in trying times in the township. Um, with regards to uh, Ninja and the report on Ninja, I personally don't find Ninja to be very functional, and uh, I think uh, other systems are a little bit better, so I'm a little disappointed with the use of Ninja, and I will leave it at that. That concludes my report. Councilman DeSena. Um, Mike, I think you're on mute. Uh, my condolences go out to the Tobo family on the loss of their, uh, of their, of Mr. Tobo's wife and their mother and, and whatever she is to others. Uh, again, we did a our DMF, our, uh, fire ambulance police did an incredible job during the storm event last tuesday um everyone performed outstandingly and i just want to give them kudos for a job well done all through town that's all i have for tonight mrs feeney okay councilwoman morgan do you have a report for this evening i do i just want to say i couldn't hear i couldn't hear can you hear me yes okay so I want to thank the police and fire department for their immediate response to the recent vandalism issues and the swift removal and the cleanup. Um, I also want to thank police, fire, DPW, OEM, everyone else who was involved and assisted during the outstanding efforts during our tropical storm, Isais. Um, it was truly amazing. They were there during the storm, after the storm, making sure everyone was safe. I want to thank the residents for being amazing neighbors rallying around those and offering support to those who were without power for days and uh, setting up donations for a neighbor who lost it all. I really think that this is what makes this place um, one of the best places to live. We're a really tight community and we shine when we're faced with challenges. I also want to acknowledge and thank um, Chief Skinner and his officers for their community outreach efforts with the bike safety program, giving rewards and warnings that require parents to respond back um, for children wearing a helmet or not wearing a helmet, and then the parents email or call that they've received the warning. It's really nice that um, the police then, you know, discuss bike safety with the kids. So I, I think that it's it's a positive reinforcement, and I like that they're taking the proactive approach, and I think it deserves a little bit of airtime, and um, that's it. I think it's they're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Council Vice President Cummings. Yes, good evening. How are you? Everyone has covered everything so well and so thoroughly.
that there's really not a great deal left to say. Of course, the first responders, the police, the ambulance, the fire people, and the DPW did a yeoman work on clearing up the mess from this storm and thank them. Public service did a great job of restoring power, which they always do. Uh, we were out here for a couple of days. It's the longest I can remember we've been out and we were restored reasonably promptly. I can't say the same of uh, the cable vision people, unfortunately, from what I've heard, although we were restored. I think that uh, Chief Skinner and his officers are fantastic. I saw them here over the weekend in action on an aid call for a non-relative non-related uh, massive heart attack. And they did an amazing job. Two of the officers, Officer Montalbano and uh, Officer Pete, help me, Peter. What's his Vareb. name? D Vareb. It did a remarkable job, uh, which I observed from a, a, a reasonable distance, staying out of everybody's way to help our uh, our visitor resident uh, the uh, restoration of services the uh, condition of the roads uh, everything that's been done has been remarkable and when we walked out of our garage door we found seven neighbors with bow saws and clippers in their hands cutting up an enormous half a tree that had fallen in our driveway and that's again what it's like to live in the township thank you very much Thank you um, for my report this evening. Again, I would like to also send my condolences to Mr. Tobo and his family. It's a very uh, sad time in his life, and I hope he's able to get back to us soon and come and we can make his spirits well. Um, <clears throat> also, thank you very much to the police, the fire department, the ambulance, everyone who helped with the storm and the storm recovery. Again, yes, we were without power for several days, and it was it was restored rather quickly, in my opinion, compared to some other people who weren't. Um, I agree with the mayor also saying that we need to address the service issues with Cablevision and the other um, internet TV provider in, in towns. Um, we need, definitely need to address that. Also, uh, I want to thank the police for their quick response to the vandalism that occurred in town. It's a very sad occurrence that has happened. And I hope that um, it doesn't happen again. And I, I was very pleased to see the comments um, publicly that people were so upset and that everybody is going to be keeping an eye out to make sure it doesn't happen again. That's, you know, makes our town great that everybody is looking out for everybody and, and that we want to live in a positive community. Um, also, I've been doing some research on council meetings and I in Moving forward for the public discussion, we're going to move to a true public comment format, which is residents will call in and they will have their five minutes. Um, and they will have their five minutes free and clear with no comment from anybody on the council. Um, and we will let the entire public speak. And at the end, if any council member would like to comment, they'll have their turn. I believe this will allow for the public to have their say without interruption. It will also allow for a much <clears throat> more professional meeting. I see that Westwood, Woodcliffe Lake, the Board of Education in our area have this format. We did have this format previously, <clears throat> and this will definitely be a positive to the current council meeting. So that's how we're going to start, and we're going to start tonight with that format. So again, public comment will be five minutes per uh, caller. And we will take notes and we will get back to you either after the meeting or there can be a comment from a council member at the end of the meeting, at the end of the public comment section. But we are going to return to a public comment portion. Madam President. And that's all we have. Yes, Mr. Cummings. I, I just, it was, sadly, I neglected to say anything because of the storm interest and so on and convey my most sincere condolences to the Tovo family on their loss. I just wanted to add that, if I may, I'm sorry. No, absolutely, no problem. Thank you so Anybody much. Else? You're welcome. So that was the end of my comment. That was excellent. That's a good idea. <laughs> yes. 
So we, we're going to move to that. We're going to move to that format tonight. Great. Okay. So general public discussion, limit to five minutes. To participate in the general public discussion portion of the meeting, please dial in on 201-664-4659. You'll be asked to state your name and address for the record, and we ask that only one person speak at a time. Please note that at the end of the general public discussion, no more calls will be accepted. Limit to five minutes. Again, the phone number is 201-664-4659. Motion to open the public discussion. So Second. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sue, please open the line. Hello? Yes. Yes, I'd like to talk. Okay, if you would please state your name and address for the record, please. Jim Zaccone, 668 Clinton Avenue, Washington Township. Mr. Zaccone, thank you for calling in. I would uh, like to comment on, uh, I see on the agenda you have ordinance number 20-11. This is the second uh, vote for this ordinance. I would urge the council to pass that tonight. Mr. Zaccone, excuse me, council president, there is a public hearing for that. So at that time, you can call back in? Excuse me? There'll be a public comment for that, so you'll be able to call back in and make your comments on that. This is a special oh, public hearing. That's okay. <laughs> I'm no Don't kid. apologize, Mr. Zaccone, that's fine. No worries. Hello? 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 Yes. Mr. Zaccone, is that you? Uh, no, it's not. Um, okay, Mr. Like Zaccone. Okay, name and address, please. Yes, hi, my name is uh, Matthew D. Shora, 62 Edgewood Drive. Um, our family is one of the 16 homes that was affected with damage from the storm on August 3rd. We had an 80 foot oak tree that fell and part of it went through our kitchen and damaged the roof and also went through our the ceiling. I want to give a, a shout out to the um, to the rapid response from the town. They did a phenomenal job. My wife and I were home at the time. We called up the police. They came over immediately to assess the situation. The fire department followed right in after that. They decided at that time to turn off the gas and electric in the event that there was a leakage in the roof. They also, the fire department also determined that there was uh, damage to the roof of our house, structural damage to the roof of our house and to the joists and the ceiling. So they recommended that we evacuate the house. We left, we came back a couple hours later, and you folks did a great job coordinating with the building inspector who left a note on our door for us to call him. And we called him back. My wife called him. He came over. He reassessed. He goes, the house is fine to stay in. You can turn back on the, you can turn back on the power. So what I'm really saying here is I just want to thank the town, the fire department, the police department, the building department for their concerns for our home and our safety and the fact that they responded so quickly and with so many other houses being damaged in town that our family would have really appreciated that. So I just want to give a shout out and a thank you. And I uh, also want to thank the uh, DPW. They haven't gotten around to our side of the town yet, but I can see the rest of the town. They've done a great job cleaning up. So it's really just a call to say thank you. Thank you very much for calling in. I hope your home gets repaired soon. Good night. Hello? 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 Yes. yes. Hello? State your name and address, please. Brian Sinclair, 864 Ridgewood Boulevard East. Ridgewood Boulevard Yes, Mr. Sinclair. Yes, Mr. Sinclair. Uh, in regard to the property on 450 Pascac Road, 55 and over, has there been any updates that you can give us or any plans for the planning board meeting? Uh, 
Now, Mr. We'll have to get back to you on that. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, if you could, we'll, we'll get back to you on that at the end of the meeting. I'll check on the time for that. And also, I know it's virtual meeting, but could this be a live meeting? A lot of interest from the town people and from the parents of school children who watch the school, and they're wondering if we could have maybe go in one of the schools and have a meeting rather than doing it virtual. We'll have to uh, get, check with the planning board on that, but we'll get back to you at the end on that. I right, appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, is there anyone else on the line? Uh, yes, there is. Hello? Yes, your name and address, please. Um, If he's not going to go, I'll go. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, is Tony Plantamira, 808 Robinwood Road? Yes, thank you for calling in. Um, I also want to comment about the storm. I think our town did a really good job for cleanup. Um, all of our uh, crews were really uh, did really did a good job. The comment I want to make is um, it's 2020 and I don't understand why public service is not more responsible for updating their uh, grid system. It's outdated. It concerns me as far as safety issues go. I know it's not the town's uh, job to basically deal with this, but I don't know if there's any kind of push with the county, all the individual towns, but if communities down south and newer communities can have uh, electrical lines underground, I don't understand why we can't get them. I know there's an expense, but everything's expensive. And um, some push because of safety concerns, uh, there's a weakness in the power grid and uh, Somebody could view that as an in for domestic terrorism. I really am concerned about that. Being on Rhymewood Road, our power constantly goes out, constantly goes out. And reminder that that storm was only two hours. Can you imagine if we had 12 hours of rain like that? What kind of damage would be around here? There's a lot of trees. Uh, there's trees that grow into the power lines. Uh, the telephone poles coming down. Uh, I just think that there should be some kind of county push, statewide push to mandate um, PSE&G and all of the other utility companies be pushed by the BPU to upgrade their systems. So I know it's not your job to only do that, but I would really like to see a concerned, concerted effort on the entire uh, northern New Jersey area about pushing that with the public service. The other thing I'd like to see, the other thing I'd like to say is, um, I don't understand why we can't have live council meetings at this point. When I came to the council meeting, there's hardly anybody in that uh, municipal building there, and there's like three people that could sit up on the dais on top, and then that table that the, uh, Residents usually sit at, there two or three people could sit down there. We can wear face masks. You could put microphones in one of the corners in the room and spread everybody out. But there's only the last meeting I came to, there were like four people in the room. So I just was hoping to see some kind of live council meetings soon. It would be great if that could be done. And also, in light of all this COVID nonsense that's going on, I was hoping somewhere down the line that there could be a push to stop development in this town, in this state. Uh, we're the most densely populated state. I brought this up in council meetings. I know this is not really your agenda, but there really should be a concerted effort too with this uh, statewide to stop development without new roads. The traffic concern is horrible. The quality of life issues are horrible in this town and in this state. 
and also because of the overdevelopment, I thought we were supposed to be spread out a little bit more, not put up high density housing all over the place. So I don't know if that's a concern of the council, if they have any other dialogue with any other mayors or the county or anything, but it should be a concerted effort here too to stop this overdevelopment uh, in this state. We don't need that. And one last comment, the house on School Street is too big. I don't know how they got a permit to build that size house, but it's, everything else is dwarfed by that house and I think it's horrible. So I guess they were within the guidelines and didn't need any variances, but it looks terrible, that house. That's all. I just wanted to say that. If anybody wants to react. We're just taking public comment at this time. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else on the line? Well, Kevin Cosman. Excuse me, sir. Can you say that again? This is Patrick Bay calling at 107 Cosman Street. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you just, uh, is, your television, is your television on? If you could just shut it off. The yeah, television's not on. Okay. That's better. Thank you. Somebody else must have had it on. Okay. Um, my questions are, are towards the um, Cherry Field and the dog park that you guys are introducing. Um, I'm not too sure of how far along you guys are with that. Uh, my concerns are the, the wildlife that we have here, the deer, the, um, we have foxes, uh, turkeys, and all those different types of animals um will slowly disappear if you guys decide to put in a dog park over there it's one of the issues that i have with that the other issue is with the um traffic i believe that's going to be brought in uh we'll have more cars and, and people coming into this area using the park while the kids are trying to play baseball um The other thing is keeping the park clean, the dog park clean. Um, as we all know, dog waste, yeah, has parasites, and it's going to pollute the water that is right there. We have streams right there. We have wetlands right there. Um, I just have several concerns about the dog park being in that area. Um, I'm not sure. Um, whether you are going forward with it or have any other ideas about what's going on with it. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'd just like to hear back from somebody so I can find out a little more information on it, if possible. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the line? This is Christopher Tereshko. I live at 473 Jackson Avenue. Yes, how are you? Good, how are you? Thank you. Good. I'm curious if any of the council members have spoken with the developers of the 450 Pascac property, and if so, what those conversations concern. That's all. Thank you. So at this time, we're just taking public comment. Correct, and I thought at the end of that, you said the council would respond. Yes, at the end, yes. If we have a response, if not, we'll have to get back to you. Understand, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else on the line? Yes. Yes, yes please state your name and address. Julianne. Julianne Lipnick, 184 Finity Place. Yes, Mrs. Lipnick. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, just resonate uh, some great feelings about our OEM and all the first responders. I have to say the uh, DPW men were out there working so very hard. I couldn't even believe with uh, PSC&G on our block, 
the uh, headway they were making removing debris. They wouldn't even accept water from uh, the residents. They had plenty of their own. So they are a great group of men, and I applaud them all. Um, second of all, um, we had a phone call not long ago from Laura at the library. And uh, kudos to her, and I really and truly do appreciate her taking the time to notify all of us residents around the area of the library because of the work that was being done uh, regarding the patio. Uh, it was really wonderful to see the town, um, I would say, taking uh, some of the professional um, backgrounds of some of the men and having them do the work as opposed to, say, an outside vendor. It uh, was really great. Laura just gave us her number and wanted to know that if there was any disruption, loud noise, if any of us were affected, that we could feel free to call her. But they worked so beautifully that you didn't even know that they were there. So again, uh, I applaud them for all their dedication. Um, on a different note, I had uh, submitted back on August 5th, I submitted a letter that I requested to have read at the uh, council meeting tonight. I know that it was on the agenda and then it was pulled from the agenda. Can uh, someone give me an answer as to why my letter was pulled? Uh, Mrs. Lipnick, we're just taking public comment at this time. Okay, fine. I'll wait to hear from, uh, from you as to a reason why. Um, on another note, Mayor Calamari, um, we wish to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to meet with us over at the shopping center when we had the issue with the dumpster and the food. I uh, certainly do appreciate Thanks. it. Well. Thank you very much for meeting with us and hearing our concerns. Thank you. My pleasure, Mrs. Lipnick. Thank you, Mrs. Lipnick. Anybody else on the line? Yes, hi. Good. Yes, good evening. Uh, state your name and address, please. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Anthony Udina. I live at 876 Ridgewood Boulevard East. Um, a few things I just want to mention. I want to echo the positive comments on the storm response. Uh, I also want to thank the town for the uh, the recent movie night uh, with Sonic and Todd. That was great. My family enjoyed it. Thank you for everything on that. And the third thing is um, a gentleman uh, a while ago mentioned about uh, overdevelopment in the town. And I just want to um, make some comments on that. Uh, the it will be going to the zoning board for two variances for 450 Pascac Road, and I just want to state that I oppose the approval of that. There's so many reasons why that should not happen, and I hope that it doesn't happen. Um, I do intend on uh, emailing the uh, mayor or council uh, zoning boards with my concerns specifically, and uh, hopefully they'll get a chance to read that. And... Um, that's all I want to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you for calling in. Is there anyone else on the line? Yeah, yes, hello? Hi, uh, yes, good evening. Please state your name and address. Michael Ullman, uh, 2 Clark Avenue. Yes, Mr. Ullman. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate uh, the comments that were made uh, regarding the storm response, uh, specifically about the DPW uh, and uh, the uh, Rector Scuderi. Uh, the men were out before the storm laid down. Uh, they were on Van Ember, where I happen to live, clearing a large uh, tree that was down uh, for the PSCNG. And rather than packing it in and calling it a day, they proceeded to go down from the uh, Ridgewood border all the way to the flashing light and cleared up the debris. Uh, they were really efficient. The chipper, uh, 
uh, was an excellent purchase, and the only thing I would like to add to that is perhaps they should evaluate a larger chipper, given the number of and frequency and intensity of the storms we've experienced. Uh, that looks a little undersized, and uh, perhaps the capital budget next year will uh, allow for a, uh, a larger chipper. The other item I had um, was a comment about the emergency service uh, building. Uh, I guess I'm a little confused uh, on a number of points. One is uh, when I look at the township's website, there is no note of any or no acknowledgement that the bids have been extended or there's been an adjustment or an amendment. I don't know what the uh, official term is, but you go to the website today uh, under administration, it indicates that the bids were due by August 5th and that they would be opened at two o'clock. So the fact that uh, we're continuing and extending this process without it uh, being noticed on the website, uh, I don't know. Uh, if that's required, but I would think it should be. The second thing on that is I don't understand after many years and payments to our architect and engineer of tens of thousands of dollars. Actually, I think the architect is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point. How? We didn't gather everything that was needed, and we have to do an amendment or an adjustment or an extension. Uh, you know, who, who is running this show? Uh, you know, we've hired these people based on their experience, and now we're being told that you can't uh, anticipate these items. So I think, you know, that makes me question who these, who these individuals are and do they have the experience that they say they do. Uh, and lastly, um, I would like to understand if the bids, uh, what time the bids would be open. Uh, on, I believe you mentioned the 28th. I believe the mayor mentioned the 28th. I may have noted that wrong. Uh, where they'll be opened and is the public invited uh, to uh, witness those openings? Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the line? Uh, yeah. Yes, good evening. Uh, your name and address, please. It's Kevin Zicko, 661 Jefferson Ave. Yes, Chief Zicko, how are you? Hi, Chief in town. I just wanted to be able to publicly thank all of the emergency workers in town, especially the guys in the fire department, uh, responded to the storm impeccably for hours before they had even had a chance to get and check their own homes. So I just wanted to be able to say thank you to the guys in my department and the DPW and the police, everybody was crazy, but just wanted to be able to say that publicly. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for calling in and we and the council, mayor and administration all share your thanks too. Is there anyone else on the line? A motion to close public comment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. If the council would like to comment on any of the callers, Councilman Cassio. Uh, not at this point. Councilman DeSena. Yes. Um, as I stated at the last meeting, I am not in favor of the dog park at Cherry Field. I uh, I understand the gentleman's uh, statements he made. And I'm in agreement with a lot of what he had to say. Uh, the second thing I want to discuss is we cannot discuss any proposed development with the developer. It would be a, uh, and Mr. Pollard can add to it, right, Mr. Pollard? We shouldn't be discussing any proposed development in front of any board with the developer. That's correct. That's correct. No comment whatsoever can be made by the council. Correct. And this, the third thing is, is that the bid opening on the 28th does need to be done in the public, whether it's done through Zoom or Ninja. It does need to be, uh, the link needs to be sent out to the public of how they can view the bids being opened. So I don't know how the administration plans on doing that, but it's something we need to do with uh, state law. That's all I have, Mrs. Feeney. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Councilwoman Morgan? No, not at the Council Vice President uh, Cummings? Nothing uh, relevant to say at this point. Thank you kindly. You're very welcome. I um, also want to um, say the same thing Councilman DeSena said about we're not allowed to converse with the developers. Um, and also regarding the bids information, yes, it should be public. And I believe the person in town hall who is responsible, unfortunately, was going through a family crisis at the present time. So I believe that, yes, it might not have been updated on the website, but I believe that his family crisis definitely um, took precedent at the moment. And that's an apology, I'm sure, from the administration that it will be corrected on the website as soon as possible. But again, um, there was a family crisis and some very sad news that came from that. Um, I also want to address Mrs. Lipnick, and, and my first question is, is that I, it wasn't not originally on the public agenda. I'm not sure what happened and uh, why that's being questioned. Uh, I do know that further information is being gathered regarding her inquiry for the water problem she had in her house. And before we discuss it further, I want to make sure that all the facts are gathered and everybody has the right information so that we can come to a proper conclusion regarding that matter. So I'm actually not sure how she got that information, but um, I do want to let her know that um, we are looking into it from the GIF that claim that was requested at the last meeting to the paperwork that she submitted to all the information the council requested. So there was nothing to update tonight. Um, and again, I'm not really sure what happened there, but uh, thank you very much for calling in Mrs. Lipnick and I hope to have an answer for you at the next council meeting. That's all I have for right now. Stacy, can I get a comment or two in? Yes, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, yeah, just to uh, looking at my notes that I took while people were talking. Um, some of this is repetitive, but it's quickly. Yes, uh, 450 PASCAC goes to the zoning board, not the planning board. Uh, and I agree with everyone's comments that us public officials cannot be in discussion with the boards about these things. Uh, the dog park, um, some people don't think it's in a good place. Um, I'm not disputing whether it is or is not, but as was said, I think at the last meeting, um, we the bid won't be, uh, I'm sorry, the grant won't be awarded till early next year. And the grant writer indicated that uh, we can move the park that he doesn't see that being an issue uh, that if we move it, we would not get the grant. So we will uh, take this time to reevaluate other locations and see what we can come up with. Um, Yes, Mrs. Lipnick, it was a pleasure to meet with you and your neighbor. Uh, I apologize, I couldn't get back to you last week, but I definitely will this week. Um, Mr. Ullman, yes, the uh, larger chipper, uh, I agree that we probably need a second one, and so uh, we will put in next year's capital to get a larger one uh, to handle the larger debris. Um, uh, someone already apologized about the website still having the old date. Uh, apologize for that, just an oversight. And uh, the amendments, I've been told that on a $5 million plus project, it is not uncommon to have amendments to a bid package like this. And as I said, uh, we'd rather get it right and have the two-week delay uh, than uh, you know, not put out the amendments and potentially get it wrong on such a big project. Uh, so those are my notes from the callers. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, we are going to continue on with the meeting. Uh, I'm, since it is 8.42, I'm going to ask, does anybody need a break? No. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Okay. Ordinances. Adoption second reading. Ordinance number 20-09, an ordinance amending littering provisions in the code of the Township of Washington includes surgical and medically protected masks and gloves and to require mandatory court appearance for violations. Resolution number 20-255, authorizing second reading and opening a public hearing for ordinance 20-09. May I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Oh, second. <laughs> Sue, roll call. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman DeSena? Yes. Councilwoman Morgan? Yes. Council President Feeney? Yes. Um, Sue, you're gonna. I'm gonna put the phone number out there. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. 
Okay. To participate in this portion of the general public discussion, which pertains to the littering provisions in the code of the Township of Washington, include surgical and medically protected masks and gloves, and to require a mandatory port, port appearance, the phone number is 201-664-4659. You are limited to five minutes, and this will be a public comment session also. So please open the line. Is there anyone on the line regarding the littering ordinance? Hello? Yes, this is Jim Zaccone calling. Okay, do you have a comment <laughs> on the littering ordinance? Tiro's yes. Okay. Uh, ordinance 20-11, uh, I understand this is uh, on the agenda for tonight and it's the second reading of, of the ordinance. And I would urge the council to pass this uh, this evening because it uh, includes money for uh, the new ladder truck for the fire department. That truck is out of service more than it's in service. And it was out of service though through the whole storm. This is the Cody, they're on 20-09. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. No, I'm sorry, so you, that's all right. If you just kind of hang tight and call back in a couple minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is a car. It should be like three minutes, not even, okay? Is there anyone else on the line? Does that sound like it's Stacey? I know. Okay, motion to close public um, hearing. No more. I have a second? Second. Um, to roll call. Councilman Casio. Yes. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman DeSena. Yes. Councilwoman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance number 20-09 at second reading by title. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Yeah. Okay. Sue, roll call. Councilman Cassio. No. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman DeSena. Mm, yes. Councilwoman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Okay. Ordinance number 20-10, an ordinance under Chapter 55 of the Code of the Township of Washington setting forth the rate of compensation and manner of payment of employees for the year 2020. Resolution number 20-2566, authorizing second reading and opening a public hearing for Ordinance 20-10. Uh, may I have a motion? Uh, second. 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 Sue, roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman DeSena. Yes. Councilwoman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Um, please note this portion is for 20-10, which is the salary ordinance to participate in the general public discussion for the salary ordinance portion. Please dial in on 201-664-4659. Please limit your time to five minutes and this will be public comment. Is there anyone on the line for 20-10? Salary ordinance. Salary ordinance, public comment. Does not appear to be. Okay, may I have um, a motion to close public hearing for 20-10? So moved. Okay, I'll second. Sue, roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman DeSena. Yes. Councilwoman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance number 20-10 at second reading by title. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, I'll second. Um, Stu, roll call. Councilman Cassio. No. Councilman Cumming. Yes. Councilman no. DeSena. No. Councilwoman Morgan. Yes. Council President Feeney. Yes. Mr. Pollard, three yeses, two noes. Carries. It carries. Thank you.
Sue, so are you ready to go on to the next or you need to win? Okay. Okay. Ordinance number 20-11, bond ordinance appropriating 2.5 million and authorizing the issuance of $2,380,500 in bonds or notes of the township for various improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the township of Washington in the county of Bergen, New Jersey. Resolution number 20-257, authorizing second reading and opening a public hearing for ordinance 20-11. May I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Third. Councilman Cassio has it. Okay. Uh, Sue, roll call. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman DeSena? Yes. Councilwoman Morgan? Yes. Council President Feeney? Yes. Okay. Thank Please God. call in for the public comment on 20-11. Um, the phone number is 201-664-4659. Again, this is for the public comment on Ordinance 20-11 for the ladder truck. Yay for the energy management. And please limit your time to five minutes and this will be public comment. Stu, go ahead. Public comment? Yes, this is Jim Zaccone calling again. Yay, thank you, Yay, thank you for calling back. Hey, thank you for calling back. I thought we'd never hear from you. But I couldn't understand what all the background noise going on. But I am sorry. No, that's okay. We enjoy having you. <laughs> um, I would urge, urge the council to pass this this second reading for this ordinance, and uh, I would urge the council to pass that tonight. That truck is 33 years old. It's long overdue. It should have been replaced 13 years ago. If ISO comes in here and, t and rates this fire department, they set the rates that the insurance companies charge the residents for their fire insurance. That truck is long overdue. If they come in here, we will lose our rating and everybody's insurance rates will go up. And the truck is out of service more than it's in service. It's like your car. If your car's in the gas station more than it's home in your garage, then you start to say to yourself, well, maybe I got to think about buying a new car. Well, this is where we are. It's long overdue. I would urge the council to pass that. And last month, uh, there was a caller called in and said about the timing of it, that the new firehouse is going to be uh, not ready by the time that truck comes in. It'll be sitting out in the weather. And I would have to say, as the caretakers of that vehicle, do you really think that that fire department would allow that truck to sit out in the weather Come on, give them more credit than that, please. So I urge you to vote for that tonight. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling in, and we appreciate your comments. Is there anyone else on the line? Okay. Motion to close public hearing for Ordinance 20-11. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Sue, roll call. Councilman Casio. Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman DeSena? Yes. Councilwoman Morgan? Yes. Council President Feeney? Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance number 20-11 at second reading by title. May I have so a moved. motion? So moved. Second? Second. Sue, roll second. call. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman DeSena? Yes. Councilwoman Morgan? Yes. Council President Feeney? Yes. Oh, this is the best I felt all day. I hope you're listening, Mr. Zaccone. <laughs> I don't think he'd miss it for anything. I don't think so either. I'm glad he's listening. And we're going to get our energy management system too. Yes. Yay. Okay, there's... <laughs> it's like there's Crimmins. No... <laughs> there's no introduction or first readings. There's no individual resolutions. Resolutions and consent agenda. The following items have been determined to have the unanimous consent of council and will be enacted in one motion. Should any item be require independent consideration, any council member may have such item removed from the consent agenda. Would anybody like to have any item removed? I would like to have the bill list removed. So number 20-258. Would anybody else like to have any other items removed? No. No, okay. 
Motion to approve consent agenda resolutions, resolution number 20-259, authorized refund of the balance of engineering escrow monies, B4315, L4429 Howard Street, in the amount not to exceed $17. Resolution number 20-260, authorized submission of Municipal Alliance Grant for fiscal year 2021. Motion to approve consent agenda resolutions. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay, so I would like to discuss, because of recent developments, Ameri pay not paying American asphalt until they fix the issues that have been brought up with several residents in town. Okay, uh, Stacy, that's uh, pretty much standard, is uh, we review with them at the end of the project, come up with a punch list, uh, address all the concerns that were brought up, and I know they are numerous also, uh, so we'll definitely hold up payment on them until everything's been addressed. Okay, so that line item is going to get pulled out of the payment then? Well, that I don't think that's their full payment. I think we have to pay them something, but we, they will not get final payment until we've reviewed everything with them. Okay, but here's my problem is that with the amount of issues that they've caused in town already and we're moving forward with them with the second phase, I would like to see them fix the issues to our satisfactory before we pay them for the piece that they just finished because this technically is the piece they're getting paid for and they've caused a lot of problems. Okay, uh, I'll defer to Ken if that's something Ken we can do. Can we hold up a payment and just not the final payment? Let me take a look at the contract. Uh, why don't you pull the payment for now? Let me take a look at the contract, um, and, I, and I'll get back to you, okay? okay. Works for me. Thank you. That's the only item on the bill list that I had. Does anybody else have any other I had items? a few questions. Mr. Mayor, did we have a party for the Golden Seniors for a movie in Lily's Bistro? Um, that goes back to uh, January or even December. It was late. The bills were late coming in. Uh, so it, it was not a current, but yes, it did occur. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure, cause I know in the pandemic, yes. you know, we're, I know we didn't do anything. Right. Um, the question is, is, um, we have, uh, four, four things paid to Ben Schaefer for, we spent, you know, close to $35,000 on garbage cans on the litter. Uh, yes, on I, I recall the that. Yes. Um, do we know where those garbage cans are going and how many we bought? Um, I apologize offhand, I don't remember how many we bought, uh, but they are going to all the fields to give a uniform appearance, and we bought that out of uh, grant money. I forget which grant it was offhand, uh, but it was mostly grant money that we had to uh, use it or lose it. Okay. My other question was, is for um, Lurch, Vincey Higgins for the 2020 municipal budget. We paid them $6,250. Correct. Is that something our new CFO will do this year so we don't have to pay that all that money to Lurch, Vincey? Um, I will certainly follow up and get back to you on that. And do you know what the new CFO's office hours are? Because I've called and, and he's, I haven't been able to get him in the office. Um, offhand, I do not. Um, yeah, is, he I wanna... working, is he working on site or is he working remotely? No, no, he's on site. Uh, you know, Sue, I don't mind if you chime in here, but I think he's here three days a week from approximately nine to three on those three days and then supplementing it with remote as needed. He is in his hours are normally Monday through Thursday. Sometimes he flips Monday and Fridays from 10 to three. Okay, thank you. If he does take a, you know, take a, a little bit of a lunch hour in between somewhere, you know, maybe half an hour, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Okay, thank you. Mike, do you leave him messages and he's not getting back or? No, 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 I haven't, I have I've not left him a message. No. Uh, okay, if that happens, obviously let me know. Yeah, that's all I have, Mrs. Feeney. Great, thank you. Does anybody else have any other items on the bill list? Okay, all right. Um, motion to approve the bill list except for American Asphalt. Um, uh, so mo motion to approve 20-258 authorized, authorized payment of bills June 12th, 2020 to July 8th minus the yeah. American asphalt. July 9th through August 13th, 
typo in there. I'm sorry. Except oh, okay. Sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. You said the 9th through the 13th? August 13th. Yeah, August 13th. Oh, okay. July 9th. Okay, I'm sorry. So, motion to approve resolution number 20-258, authorize a bill payment from July 9th, August 13th, except for the American Asphalt Line. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, Sue, roll call. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman DeSena? Yes. Councilwoman Morgan? Yes. Council President Feeney? Uh, yes. Okay, adjournment to conference agenda. May I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, first item is ordinances and legislation. There's none. Okay, um, Sue, public contracts, law increase, and bid threshold. You and I, please um, inform the council. Yes, um, I had put in your packets for July 13th and found out that we should be doing some sort of formal resolution increasing our bed threshold according to the public contract law. Um, they have the states in there. So if you have a QPA, it went from 40 to 44,000. If you don't, it goes back to 17.5. There's a local finance notice in there as well okay. as that happens every five years. And Mr. Poller is willing to do a um, resolution for us for the next meeting if the council so desires to do that increase. And this is standard? Yes. Mr. Poller, your opinion? 40 to 45. Yeah, uh, it, it just it just, in, it just increases the availability uh, for a QPA's uh, limit. That was forty thousand. It's just gone up four thousand. So, uh, okay. I'm okay with it. Also, anybody else have any other comments regarding this um, item? Good idea. Okay, Mr. Paul, if you could please go ahead with that. Yes, I will. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the tax payment interest. Is uh, Joy on the line? No, Joy's not on the line. She's on vacation. Okay, so we're going to move this to the following meeting then, I'm assuming. Mr. Uh, Mayor, do you want to comment? Um, yeah, Ken, do you want me to comment or your comment or? Okay, I guess I'll comment. Um, on the last day of the grace period this uh cycle august 10th the uh party peter, peter i'm sorry i had my mic muted i was actually talking <laughs> <laughs> right, well, in there. I, I started so i i can go and you can supplement all right go ahead <laughs> okay uh, so to start over on august 10th the last day of the grace period uh the company that uh does the uh, electronic payments either by credit card or e-check their system was down for a few hours I don't remember the exact hours they were down uh, so some people could not get their tax payments in um, on the last day of the grace period and so joy would uh, joy suggest that uh, well Ken since now it's into the legal why don't you take over from here Okay, so basically, uh, people have 10 days to pay their taxes. After that, the interest uh, starts uh, based on the resolution that you passed, you know, uh, imposing the interest rates. So, uh, however, an, an obvious uh, uh, inability to pay the payments on the last day occurred because people can't, couldn't pay uh, uh, online. Uh, now, I think from what uh, Joy was saying, there have been people calling about that, that they tried to make payments and they couldn't, uh, and they're, they don't want to be paying interest on, uh, on, the, um, on the taxes. Uh, most of these payments, as I recall, came in, uh, I guess, on the 12th as opposed, you know, 12 days after as opposed to 10 days after. So you have the authority to not charge the interest. You could waive the interest. Um, and Mr. Pollard? Yeah. What is our contractual, um, what is the contractual obligation of the vendor that provides the service? What is their liability in this? Uh, I don't know what the contract says. Which because they should have some culpability in this. They should pick up the cost. Okay. If, if the, I think the first issue is what are you going to do with the taxpayers? And I think that that's a legitimate uh, observation to go. Was the system down for two days or one day? 
It, it, was, it was down for like four to five hours on the date of the 10th. Right. Was, so, it due to the, was it due to the storm? Was there some connectivity issues or what was, do we know no, what I, happened? I, I don't believe it was because of the storm. Uh, I okay. have not heard the reason why it was down, uh, but I don't think it was storm related. Okay. So I'm willing, if it was down for four days, I'm willing to go to the 11th, which is the following day. If it was back up and running the following day. Yeah, but it may not process for 24 hours. We have to find out from the vendor when it would process. Um, Maybe the taxpayers were out. Can, can right. correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think Joy had said the total interest um, was like around $300 for everyone. Oh. Yeah, if somebody had a problem, I think we should give it back to them. There's no point in engendering the ill will because no, the storm. for three hundred dollars, it's not even a no, it's a no brainer. Just right, send them the money. Yes. Yeah, but I think we should check with our vendor and see what again? their contract states, Mr. Poller, because you know that's a bad wondering. day to have a you know the system crash on the last day. I agree. I agree. What if it has to happen for a longer time? Right? The contract's got to no, be. I, I, and I know I heard from some residents that the system was spotty, so some people could log on when it came back up, and some people couldn't log on. So you know, and for three hundred dollars, I think it's some, a courtesy we could give back to our residents. If it's only three hundred, I'm willing to give it back. Absolutely. I'd like to have the company. I'd like to deduct it from the next payment to the company. We'll, we'll see if we can do that. Uh, however, uh, and I don't want to prejudice anyone, uh, I was in the software business. Usually contracts have that proviso. They're not responsible for any damages, uh, but we'll certainly take a look. That's all. Everybody good with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Everybody else? Councilman Cassio, you're good? Yes. Okay, so Ken, do you have to prepare a resolution for that? Uh, yeah, I need the information from uh, from Joy, though. Okay, when she's back from vacation on Thursday, I believe she can get it to you. Yeah, she. I need to. I need the breakdown of who's getting. Uh, you know, the, the names and the properties and and so sure. forth. Okay. So, uh, Sue. Yes, sir. Um, can you put your hands on the contract with the vendor? I can try. Okay. If not, maybe Dina even has a copy of it. So yeah, well, I'll poke around tomorrow and see what I can find for you. Okay. Thanks. Sure. I'm yeah, sure as the mayor said they're not responsible for consequential damages for their outage due to a storm. Yeah. yeah. So what's that nothing to do with the storm, Mr. Cumming? Yeah. What uh, what so did it have, if you can't what find did it have to do with they they may be a software contractor to Edmonds. Uh so we might have to look at the Edmonds agreement also. Correct. And there are those clauses in Thank software you. contracts that say that if there's an outage or something wrong, that's not necessarily gonna be you're not going to be able to deduct it from your bill, just so yeah. everyone's aware. Uh, but we'll check it. Okay, moving on, miscellaneous, uh, Councilman Cummings and Councilman DeSena, Lightning Detection System. Mr. Mayor. I we're just want to make sure everybody received the email. Yes, we're still having issues because it's not ringing. Um, I, I was reading the report, and I've been at multiple fields during storm events. It does ring at some fields, and it doesn't ring at other fields, and the town is less... You know, they're less than a mile apart, so there should be no reason that they're all not ringing. And I believe uh, Mr. Cummings shares the same issues I've had. I'm terribly concerned. Yes. I, Back I to the Stone Age. You hear thunder and you run. <laughs> I, I, I agree with both you gentlemen. We all share the same concern. I have asked the school to look at it and have the vendor give us the report as to uh, why it's not working, because I believe I saw in one of those reports it should work up to a two-mile radius. Is this something that we need to have? I know that the school is is technically has ownership, but apparently the management of this is not necessarily working. Is there a way to retain or to regain some sort of control that we can be more in control of the safety of our residents and not just leave it to the school district, especially since they have a lot to manage at the present time? Why don't we buy the substation of the new capital budget and put it in police headquarters? I agree. I don't think we should be leaving this up to someone else. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll research the best location, Art. I don't know if higher up on Van Emberg might be better, so we'll research the best location for it. Uh, but yeah, it's something, like I said in my report, 
Uh, we think the 15000 is money well spent to have a backup, and it will be closer to our substations then to uh, make sure they're all operative. Okay. Also, Mr. Mayor, I was doing some research on this specific system, and what I read was that it only rings the first time, and then the lights start to flash. It doesn't make any noises after the fact until there's another lightning strike. Do you know if that's the case? Uh, I do not know, but I'll certainly ask the school system to check on that. Okay, because that could be why they're only hearing it once and then the lights flash on the field as a warning. It could be that it is functioning, but when the first light, what I read was when the first lightning strike happens. Stacy, you are absolutely right, but they're not, it's not ringing at some of the field. I can't hear him. Okay. I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard it yet. You are I absolutely heard it, right. It I heard it ring. at Gardner. But it does not ring at all the fields right now. Okay, I heard it. Or I heard it at Gardner. Um, I just because I think you know, is there another system that maybe we're looking for, like a different bell and whistle that we need to address also? No, when the system's operating, we've never had an issue with it. I mean, we've gotten lots of compliments on the system when it's operational. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and every time we check the substations, uh, they all have the green lights on, which means they should be communicating with the base station. Uh, so. It's, you know, it's something that they'll have to troubleshoot, but we're okay. on it. Okay. Um, okay. Does anybody else have any questions regarding this? No. Okay. I would really uh, like to see it done this year. It, as the, if the mayor has some leads on a $15,000 increase, I'm sure we can find the money somewhere. Uh, we, now that the capital oh. ordinance has passed, we will take a look and see if we can carve out that small sum of money to find it. Thank is you, there sir. a reason why we only got a, the system that rings once? Was it residents didn't want to hear it going off all the time? Or because I know that there's settings that you can also put on in the systems that changes how many times it rings. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to ask the school system, Stacey, okay. if that's something that they can reprogram. I doubt it's hardwired into the system to do that, but I'll check with them. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Okay. The next item, Mr. Cummings, to facing a public roads. I am. Um... I had some information that was given to me that uh, helped a lot with an explanation of uh, what had happened and what actions were taken. And I'm satisfied and I think uh, we can move to the next item. That's- uh, Wanna that's share that's... those items with the council? Well, I was told that the police department looked into the situation with the roads that were defaced thoroughly and checked all the uh, ring cameras in the neighborhood and that uh, people are uh, watchful at this point. And it was an unfortunate incident that uh, I'm told and I hope won't be uh, repeated because there's certainly no need for that here in what we all agree is a, a wonderful place to live. Yes, thank you, Mr. Cummings. Um, Councilman Morgan Fields, you're up. Yes, actually I had more to discuss regarding the fields. Um, I am gonna discuss them more at the next meeting. I did just wanna say that um, some of the information that I received, I would like to discuss with the grant writer to see if there's room for specific issues that need improvement on the fields. But um, from what I understand, um, there's people reaching out to him that he needs to get back to. So I'm being a little vague, but I'll get, I'll, I'll okay. talk about it more at the next meeting. I have to do Okay. Um, Stu, would you please add this to the next council meeting? It's on there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next item. Oh, you're welcome. The next item is uh, 727 Amherst Place correspondence. Um, the Chenaults wanted a email read at the council meeting. So, uh, council members, my name is Patty Cher um, Cheralt. If I please, if I say your name wrong, I'm very. I apologize in advance. My husband and I, with our two children, live at 727 Amherst Drive. We have been taxpaying citizens since May of 1992. I am requesting that my email be read at the July 27th council meeting before I send a copy to the newspapers. It recently came to my attention that the sewer problem that occurred on my property and the street in front of my property in February of 2020 was discussed at great lengths on the July 13th council meeting over Zoom. My property and the resolution of the sewer problem was also discussed on social media. The discussion was brought to the township taxpayers' Facebook page. There are approximately 1,022 township residents that are members of this page. 
1,022 people who now think that some kind of misbehavior happened because Councilman DeSena implied it. I feel personally attacked by Councilman DeSena. Negative, <coughs> excuse me. Negative accusations and false words were spoken about me and my property, and I would like to address them before I present the facts to my story. At the approximate timestamp of 2.41.30, during the Township Council Zoom meeting, the property of 184 Finnerty and its sewer problem was in discussion. I have no knowledge of this home and its ongoing problem other than that there was an engineer's report done and that there was a problem with the grease in the pipes. For the record, I am not here to discuss another homeowner's property that I don't really know anything about. I will refer to 184 Finnerty Place as apples. Okay, the council was trying to resolve the homeowner's issue when my property and the payment of a repair bill for the street in front of my property was continuously brought up by Councilman DeSena. The first false comment during the meeting made by Councilman DeSena was that my sewer pipes were filled with tree roots. 100% not true. I would like to know where he obtained that information from. Perhaps a copy of a report could be provided. <clears throat> His second comment was why there was no engineer's report done. In my case, an additional expense to the town for an engineer's report was not warranted. You will see why when I get to the, my facts later. <clears throat> Councilman DeSena went on to say that one set of rules applies to Amherst Drive and one set of rules applies to Finnerty Place. He also said the council was picking and choosing whose bills they were paying. He went on to say that the town sent their contractor to fix the problem. Many times the council president kept trying to redirect him back to the original issue at hand, which was the property at Finnerty Place, but he kept talking about my property. He said, you cannot have it both ways again, implying some kind of wrongdoing involved, some kind of wrongdoing which involved my prop, with my property. Another council member, Art Cummings, stated twice that he had no knowledge of Amherst Drive and would see would need to look into it. He couldn't comment on it because he did not have the information. Before councilman finally stopped talking at 2.23.20 of the meeting, he even told the council that the truth was that this is a negative connotation and a conspiracy. <clears throat> at this point, I am watching the meeting and I am appalled. I am being slandered by this person, a councilman, speaking of me and my property without any knowledge of what really happened. Can Councilman DeSena provide any reports or documents he read to gather this information? The only truthful statement was that was said about my property was stated by the mayor. My situation was an emergency. Let's call 727 Amherst Drive Oranges. <clears throat> The misinformation and accusations of the July 13th council meeting opened up a can of worms. The negativity carried over to the taxpayer Facebook group. As a result, I, as well as other Amherst Drive residents, have been cyberbullied. Many comments have come from former councilman, a former town employee zoning board member, and even the homeowner at Finnerty Place comments included, I must be liked more than the other resident on Finnerty Place. And favoritism in our favoritism, excuse me, in our town is not a pretty color. It was also asked if I was a relative of Boswell. Post demanded why the Amherst repair was paid for and why Finnerty Place was not. An accusation of blatant discrimination and cronyism was posted. It was also said that I cried the loudest and that I was associated with a town employer official and that all taxpayers are not being treated the same. <clears throat> I did not engage in these Facebook posts. My silence was only made, my silence only made the comments worse. The situation was referred to as feeling cloak and dagger <clears throat> and nefarious. Councilman DeSena even commented on the post. He said his comments were in no way meant to be derogatory. He just did not like how the town handled it. <clears throat> All these people certainly had a lot to say about my sewer problem and how it was handled with no actual knowledge of the situation. All of this was set in motion because of one person, Councilman DeSena. It seems like there was a political agenda and I got caught in the crossfire. On January 11, 2020, there was a water main break and repair on the street in front of my house. On February 5th, I started having plumbing issues in my home. To be specific, my son was taking a shower on the second floor 
and I had water back flowing up in my kitchen sink and sewage coming up my main floor powder room toilet. <clears throat> I managed to get a plumber to come after hours that night. After he was there four hours, the plumber's cables were still coming up clean. He saw the repair on the street and he didn't like the look of it. He suggested contacting the town DPW to have them flush the sewer lines in the street and hopefully that would solve the problem. I called the DPW in the morning and there was a truck deployed immediately. The plumber told me to run the water in the same shower to see if that did the trick. Unfortunately, I heard gurgling in my kitchen sink. The plumber returned that night to try again to figure out the problem. <clears throat> At this point, his cables got stuck in my basement wall. He had to leave me with an open sewage line in my home for the time being. He referred me to Dutra Excavating and Sewer of Montville, New Jersey, to proceed with my problem. The owner of Dutra came to my home the following morning. He then sent a truck with sonar and cameras to inspect my sewer pipes to find out exactly where the clog was. <clears throat> I paid Dutra to do this. At this point, two days and $2,000 later, it was determined that the clog was in the street and not on my property. I brought Dutra into the equation for remedy of my situation, but now it was the town's responsibility to continue for me. It was not my property to dig up. Dutra told me that they would follow up with the town. I have no knowledge of what happened from here on between the town and Dutra. One week later, on February 12th, the problem was finally resolved. Excavation was held off because of the weekend and inclement weather for a few days. My family of four had to endure one week of no running water in my kitchen sink, no dishwasher, no washing machine, no showers, and very limited running water and toilet use. <clears throat> Let's not forget I had an open sewage line in my basement for five days. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am lucky to have fabulous neighbors who allowed me and my family to use their homes for showers all week long. During the actual repair, pictures were taken by Dutra and William Lawler, the DPW superintendent. The sewer repair, the sewage repair was in the broken water main trench. Sorry, just give me one second. <clears throat> It was concluded that the sewage pipe was damaged at some point as a result of the water main repair. Apparently, the sewage pipe runs a few feet under the water main. Suez was contacted and sent an inspector to the site. A conversation between myself, William Waller, the DPW superintendent, and the inspector resulted in agreement that the sewage pipe was damaged by Suez during the water main repair. The Suez inspector gave me the name and phone number of Deborah Hummel, a Suez insurance claim specialist located in the Paramus office. By the very next day, I had a claim number. It took many months of phone calls and emails, but I finally recovered all of the money I put out with due diligence. I am confident the town can do exactly what I did to recover the money that was put out to Dutra to open the street and repair the sewage pipe in the street in front of my house. There obviously is some sort of disconnect within the workings of the council administration. I cannot possibly be the only homeowner in the township that this has happened to. This was a true emergent situation. I feel very lucky to have had the DPW help and guidance for the quickest resolution possible. If I needed council approval, my family and I may very well be fighting for a resolution to our sewage problems to this day. This truly was my tax paying followers at work. I hope this never happens to any of my fellow townspeople. I also wish the homeowner at 184 Affinity Place some resolution and compensation in her sewer matter. I cannot speak about Howard Street or any previous township homeowner sewer problems and resolutions, but I can make you aware that there must be pineapples, strawberries, and lemons out there too. Not all sewer problems are the same. We are not comparing apples to apples here. Besides requesting my letter be read the next council meeting, I also would like the entire council to rewatch the July, July 13th council meeting. This meeting does not put the council in a very good light. I think we can do better here. The council did not seem well informed of the situation that occurred at 727 Amherst Drive, and even though it was confidently com commented on, maybe it should have been discussed at a later date with the facts presented to all. I feel like the council should only comment when they are properly informed before conjuring up conspiracies. 
To disclose, I have not been contacted at all about any of this. I would have been happy to address an email, phone call, or even a knock on my door to clear anything up. I have nothing to hide, and I think silence would have been an appropriate response rather than speculating false, falsely during the council meeting. I also think it is very unbecoming for an elected official to engage and make derogatory comments on a social media page. <clears throat> Maybe the town council should make a professional and official Facebook group to share useful and positive information. This would seem more appropriate to me. If Councilman DeSena can let his emotion override his ability to understand facts from his opinion and let it get in the way of his duty to the taxpayers of this wonderful community, maybe he should stand out. I will not comment on the situation any further. My family, my neighbors, and I have been harassed enough. I will end this email with a quote from Councilman DeSena. Let's start thinking about the township taxpayers first. Thank you for hearing me out. Patty Sherald, 727 Amherst Drive. <clears throat> um, I do want to let you know that I did do some research um, and I did find out that there's emails regarding this exact property. And it was determined with Mr. Law or the DPW and Suez that Suez damaged the pipe their pipes, their sewage pipes. And then Mr. Lawler did send an email to the claim, the insurance claim. We do have the email that says that, that um, they are requesting reimbursement for the repair on this property. <laughs> and I'm reaching out to Mr. Lawler to find out if he sent the pick with this claim. So just so everyone is clear, it was not roots. It was determined to be that Suez um, damaged the pipe and the Suez inspector agreed and we are filing a claim to get the money reimbursed and that's what I have to say regarding that thank you Mr. Chief. but at the at the April meeting during when it was pulled from the bill list the first time as per Mr. Tovo's statement which is on video it was route related and I questioned how it could be route related if it was in the roadway and I was told we'd get a response and we were never given this information until this letter came to the council. That's all I will state. Thank you. Would anybody else like to comment? Okay. The only thing I'm going to leave that with is I do apologize personally to the resident that this caused their family cyberbullying. I myself am aware of how that affects the family. Um, and personally, I know it's, it's hurtful, it's mean, it's unnecessary, and it should not be happening as adults. Anybody else have any other comments? I do agree that there should be a Facebook page that should remain positive. I think that there's a lot of... Um, attention to the negative aspects and it does have a, a hint of political agenda for for some of those comments on facebook um so i think that you know it, the sooner we stop that the better we'll we'll all be there's enough negativity going around we don't need it um you know every time you open up social media pertinent information positive information or be quiet yes i agree yes absolutely 100 percent. and i think that you know certain pages as professional council members should be avoided commenting on. <clears throat> okay, we need to break for a minute. I need to, Councilman uh, Cummings, I believe he had an internet outage. We oh. just need to bring him back. So we're gonna take a, um, a five minute break, Ricky. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, is he back? I'm back. Okay, he's back. Okay, thank you. I do also want to mention in, um, in that um, the township actual official Facebook page does always have positive and pertinent information on it also, just as a good avenue for information. Okay. May I catch up? Did you finish the letter? The next, I did. Do you have a copy of the letter, Mr. Cummings, or do you need to forward it to you? No, ma'am. I, I have a very nice copy. Thank you kindly. Okay. You're very welcome. Okay. Um, I, the I just want to clarify. Absolutely. The township, our Facebook page, as the township does, there's other outliers that a few people pay attention to, and that's very, very negative. So if you don't yes. like what's being said there and you really want the real information without artifact, 
you know, there's other avenues that people should explore. Yes, and it's it is it needs to be more positive and the other pages seem to be used for negative impact and, and also for it's only a handful of it is anyway, but just but it's sad. I really it's think sad. it's important that we have all the all the pertinent details before we comment on things. Yes, absolutely. That's why I you know, I make sure all the information is in the packets before they go out. If we don't have all the information and we're waiting for someone and we can't have an intelligent professional conversation, it's not, you know, it's not. Um, Mr. Feeney, I, 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 dis I respectfully us. disagree with you. Mr. Tovo stated that it was a root issue and that's where okay. I want to leave it. Councilman DeSena, I'm saying in general about things I, I put on the agenda. I wasn't talking about this specifically. I was saying that on the agenda to make i always make sure that and sue can attest to this that we have all the information that's pertinent to the line item that's on the conference agenda and the um the meeting agenda to and the regular meeting before we move forward so we can have a professional productive conversation and not get you. guessing that's and i have 10 open i have 10 open, I have ten open, have I have open open requests I have, I have, I have. so all of you are talking at once and nobody can hear anything so, um, okay, anyway, let's, so the next item is grease trap invoices, uh, Councilman DeSena, that's uh, your item. Mr. Uh, Taller, is there a way we can, I have a comment. Excuse me, Dr. Gascia. Comment? Uh, just wait one second, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Counts go ahead, Councilman Cassio. Oh. Yeah, okay, and let me understand this, if, if a council member wants something on the agenda and it doesn't get on, I want to know why that why that would be. Um, Talk about having you know reasonable information. I want to know why stuff is, is requested and it's not put on. If it's a duplicate item, for just take for instance, if it's something that's already on the project track, I'm going. Or if it wants to be discussed in, in more detail, and a uh, council member, no matter who wants it on there. Uh, we request it and it doesn't get put on. I don't think that's a free flow of information. I believe thank you're you. I, have a problem, I have a problem with that. Council thank, you for your, thank you for your opinion. Um, I have just a opinion, comment. I have a comment to that, Councilwoman Feeney. If no, actually, it's, it's your opinion. You said you don't feel it's a free flow of information. That's your opinion. In so the, gonna, when you're trying I not to be redundant, agenda, if you're trying. Hold on, you're probably at the same time again. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilwoman Morgan, did you have a comment? I did. I was I, saying, I in the event so not I, to be in the, in the, I understand not wanting to be redundant. So in that case, instead of putting it on there and having it as part of the agenda, if it's on the project tracker, we have an opportunity to speak to it as well and question it, right? Really? Correct. All right. You have a free, you have a free opportunity to ask as many questions as you want during the project tracker. Absolutely. Correct. Okay. There, there's no limit on that portion of the meeting. Okay, Councilman oh, DeSena, the grease trap invoice. Everything's on the, not all the comments are on the progress tracker. Councilman DeSena, the grease trap invoices. Mr. Mr. Pollard, is there some way we can adopt the health ordinance to include that the grease traps at all our food establishments have to be maintained in a proper working fashion is there some kind of ordinance we can write because a lot of them haven't been serviced it seems like and that's why the lines are filling up with grease uh, i have to check with it with a, the health department and take a look at our ordinances and, and just no take a look at that okay if you could look at that i appreciate Councilman, it. i just i had a question when i looked at the health department ordinances there's currently no requirement for any sort of report or anything. I didn't know that until this came up. Did you know that, that there wasn't a requirement? For that's why I'm asking of... Mr. Pollard if he can amend the ordinance to have a report that's given to us with invoices attached that the grease traps are being cleaned. Do we know, does anybody happen to know what other towns are doing in this regard? Like, or do they have, or do they have a report that's required or like a, an annual inspection that's required? Do we happen to know that? I, see. I can well, certainly look into it. A monthly, uh, a monthly log for grease traps. Okay, so Mr. Cummings and Councilman Cassio were both speaking at the same time. Councilman Cassio, what did you say? 
Yes, many towns for the establishments that have greased traps, the uh, establishment is required to keep a log of their grease. Do you know which towns require that so we can reach out? It's required. I think uh, uh, Glen Rock, I think they have it, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. No? And the city of New York obviously does. So, and, and, the, and the business owner is required to record their, uh, their findings monthly. Okay, great. Go, I'll take a look at Glen Rock and see if we can find this. Sue, could you reach out to your cohorts also and see if they have anything? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, um, Councilman DeSena, employee furlough due to pandemic, follow up. Mr. Mr. Mayor, are there any uh, departments that we think we need to uh, tighten the belt on due to the pandemic um, and what it's doing to those departments? Um, I don't think so, Mike. Um, I've been checking with the departments regularly. Um, COVID has not affected uh, the volume of transactions that most of them are handling. Okay. Uh, if anything, some are up in the building department, I'm happy to report, because uh, we figure people are staying home and maybe had accumulated money for projects, and so they're looking to get them off the ground. Uh, but it is something we monitor on about a monthly basis to make sure that, you know, our people are still working and keeping up with things. Okay. Um, and Councilman DeSena, 2019 2020 road program. I know the mayor updated us on the streets that were completed. Um, yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, my, my, my comment was, Mr. Pollock, can we look at a paving moratorium or do we have a paving moratorium? Because we, we just paved the mountain. We have, we have, we have I think it's uh, three years, if I'm not mistaken. So, Mountain was just paved by us, uh, you know, a year and a half ago. So, did PS pay for that whole street? Except for, except for emergencies, I believe, is, is one of the things. Well, putting a new gas main from end to end is not an emergency. That's a preventive maintenance. So, I mean, shouldn't PSE and G have paid for those streets? Like Calvin, we just paid to have the one piece repaved when it was done only a few years ago. I mean, so we do have the paving moratorium. So I think we really need to start looking at that um, because, you know, we're paving, you know, Mountain was just done. I mean, uh, we just, we were complaining about the craftsmanship about it less than a year or two ago with Mrs. Grow, and we just paved it again. Which section of Cal which section of Calvin was repaid was paved last year? Not Calvin. Um on the other side, the the little short piece they just did. That was just done. Um, I, think, I think there was a break. There was an emergency on that road because I was living there then. That's what happened there. They had that whole No, but when I'm saying they go Yeah, little breaks are one thing, um, Stacy, but when you you know, when you rip up a street from end to end for gas mains, that's a that's a renovation. So that's not an emergency. So can we look at that and make, make sure that our engineer knows that we have this moratorium so we don't pay for streets again like we did with Mountain? Is that something you can look at, Mr. Mayor, with the engineer? I certainly will. Mr. Pollard, can we get a copy of that moratorium? The ordinance? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. That's all Close. I have, Mr. Okay. Closed session. Resolution number 20-26. One updates purchase laser acquisition and real property with public funds pending or anticipated litigation or contract negotiations, temporary relocation of DPW vehicles and equipment, intersection property acquisitions and litigation. COA and Viviana motion to enter into closed session. And again, please keep in mind that this is allowed during COVID for the virtual meetings as stated in the previous meetings. Mrs. Feeney, will we be closed? No. Thank you. That's all I want to just tell the public. That's all. Yeah. Stacy, I have uh, one okay. thing to add also. Uh, I would like to dis sure. discuss uh, commuter parking. Uh, I had a meeting today that I'd like to bring the council up to date on. Sure. That sounds great. And commuter parking. Motion to enter into closed session. May I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Oh. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, so um, Ricky, we're not coming back. Um, if you'd like to come down and turn off the TVs, and then thank you everybody for joining us in the meeting tonight.